This segment is brought to you by the all new Realtree Timber. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. For the next four weeks, we're gonna talk about what's on my lanyard and why it's on my lanyard. Uh, I'm gonna start it. You're gonna hear from Godwin, Jace, Martin, and learn why they have those certain calls on their lanyard. So, that being said, we'll start with this one. The lanyard itself is the Cut'em lanyard. We sell them here at Duck Commander. It's got a big old picture of Phil's face on it. So, I wanna start with the probably most important call on the lanyard, which is the whistle. This is a Mallard Drake call. It, all it is is a whistle with a tube over it. Now, if you blow straight into it, you got a train whistle. If you hum into it, you got a Mallard Drake. Very similar to a Mallard Drake. So, the reason why this call is so important, because if, if you have somebody in your blind, and uh, I know every blind has them, that loves to blow a, hen, a Mallard hen duck call, but they don't sound that good, you give them one of these. Say, man, I, I sure do wish somebody would blow that Mallard Drake call. It sure does help get those ducks a little closer. So, I always have you two or three of these in your bag. So, when you get that guy that shows up that's, that's tooting on a duck call, doesn't sound like a duck, give him one of these, he won't scare them. You can also do your uh, teal drakes. You can do your pintails. You put your finger over the end of it. Pintail, you can do your widgeon. It's a six in one whistle with a tube around it. Very versatile, won't scare the ducks. So, very important call. Now, another call I have on my lanyard that has worked a lot over the years is the Gadwall call. This is the Gadwall Magnum call. It's a little louder than uh, our original Gadwall call, but the Gadwall Drake, it makes a real simple sound. It's a tat, tat, tat. You just say tat into this call. Gadwall Drake, not a whole lot to him. Another call that won't scare ducks. Very subtle. You guys that hunt in the woods, this could come in useful on those on those breaks with that duck weed, that green seed. So now let's get into the mallard hen calls. So you never know what scenario you're gonna find yourself in when you're duck hunting. So I like to be prepared for every scenario. If I need to call soft, I need a call that calls soft. If I need to call loud, I need one that'll romp and stomp. Now, this new one we came out with last year, the RDC, and if you're wondering what RDC stands for, is pretty funny, it stands for Regulation Duck Call. <laughs> so, this is the RDC 100, which is extremely loud. Open water, high wind, you know, sometimes loud calling is necessary. And this one is, is about as loud as they get. A lot of bark in this call, well, demonstration. <laughs> On the opposite end of the spectrum is the RDC 200. The RDC 200 has a silencer in it. So, this one's loud and stiff. This one is easy to blow and soft. You can blow it hard and it's still soft. So if I'm hunting in the timber and those ducks are a little call shy, I want to use a soft call. 
If I'm hunting open water and the wind's going real hard, I use a loud call, get their attention. And then, since we hunt in the woods, we see a lot of wood ducks. Now, I've heard a lot of people say you can't call a wood duck. Well, that's not true. Now, you do have to have certain things going on to get their attention, mainly splashing the water, motion decoys, jerk strings, pull your jerk string violently, a lot of sloshing. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a few wood duck decoys in your spread on a string, but we have called in wood ducks like mallards on, I would say, hundreds of occasions, especially when they got fat bellies and just ate. So the key to calling wood ducks is, like I said, a lot of motion on the water and use sitting sounds. Wood ducks have sitting sounds. They'll have a flying sound. You hear the wood ducks fly by, they sound like this. Don't blow that because you're imitating sitting ducks. Use the sitting sounds. Those are sitting sounds a wood duck makes. Play with this one. There's a, there's a couple of breaks um, in this reed. That real high pitch, you squeeze it off, blow as hard as you can, you get that real high pitch in it. The last call I'm gonna talk about on my lanyard is what I, I call an all-purpose call. I call him old squeaky, but he's, he's, this is the cut down timber. This is the cut down magnum insert I fit in the, uh, in that, in that new barrel, that new short barrel. And the sound we got out of it had a little squeak on the end of the notes, uh, which if you, if you listen to a bunch of mallards feeding in the field, there's, you can hear those squeaks. It's, it's, it goes a little something like this. You hear that little squeak on the end of it. And this one has that on when you change your notes off as well. You can hear that little slight, slight squeaky sound at the end of it. I love this call. It'll get loud, you can milk it down soft. It's all around, all around good duck call. Uh, highly recommend this one. I would say out of all the duck calls that that we make, this is my favorite. Going back from start to finish, my mallard Jake, that's for the guy that can't blow a duck call in your duck blind. Hand that to him. But well, you know, in the in the tip in the call shy ducks, a lot of times we just blow mallard Drake calls. We don't even blow the blow the mallard hand calls. We'll just and that'll work. Gadwall Magnum. <laughs> Loud and soft, RDC 100, RDC 200, regulation duck call. Real loud, real soft. I got my wood duck call, and then I got my all-purpose call. My go-to call, my favorite call. That's the cut down timber, so. Hope that helped you out a little bit. Try them out. I think you'll enjoy them. I think they'll work for you. But be prepared for any scenario you might come across when it comes to duck calling. So have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Try them out. I think you'll like them. Like, subscribe. See you next time.